Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video we're going to be uh, touching on our subject we looked at in our previous video and if you haven't seen the previous video we'll put a link on the screen now because that's a again using what we're going to be using dynamic ranges. Uh, very useful video as I was saying so I'll put a link to that previous video on the screen now so you can go check that out as well. But what we're going to be using dynamic uh, ranges for in this video is for populating our drop down lists. So Many of you would have seen our previous videos uh, quite a while back now of how we can use drop down lists in our data to enforce the values that people select. So as a quick recap, let's say um, in this column here in column D, we simply want to do a yes or no response. Um, and obviously take this out of context, obviously it says review at the top there, and this would not probably want a yes or no in here, but we'll just do that for example purposes. So what we can simply do is we just literally go into our data, and we go to data validation, and then we can select a list option and then in here we could either select a, a static list uh, or we can simply type in uh, yes sort of no like these are options and then that gives us this drop down in that range to select either yes or no now, and if someone tried to put something else other than that so let's spell yes wrong or new obviously it's not going to allow them to do it um, uh, the other way you can do it as I just sort of briefly touched on there is you could also have your values here uh, in an actual range and then we can actually go into reference that range. So let's go data validation. And this time we're going to select that range there. And you can see it does the same result. It just means that if we wanted to change our values, we could simply do it here rather than having to go into the actual settings for it. The limitation with obviously entering your values, whether you do it into the actual pop up itself or creating the list, as I've done in the second example here, is that. If you add new values or you want more values to um, be available, so maybe like the option of maybe, what you'd have to do is go back into your settings, back into your data validation, and oh, I'm in the wrong air range. Uh, so you'd have to go back into everything and reset your ranges so that you are now looking at the new range. So for us, it's going to be now these three rather than just the two uh, for that new value to pull in. Well, okay, it's not too much work that you have to do, but if you're sending this um, this spreadsheet out for other people to populate or uh, any other numerous examples of where this is called fall over, it just means that values might get updated uh, or added to your list, but they're not actually getting pulled into your dropdown. So it can just cause confusion, basically. So the way to get around that is to have a dynamic list. And that being, as soon as a new value is added to that list, it's automatically picked up by our data validation and it's going to be available for the user to select. In order to do this, and again, like in the previous video, we're going to be using tables in order to give us this dynamic range. All I'm going to do is just get rid of the data validation we've got here at the moment. Uh, let's go clear all, OK. You can see that drop down is now gone. And just for tidiness, let's just get rid of these values that we've got here as well. Perfect, so we can start fresh. What I'm going to do is go into our second sheet here. I've called it values, but it really doesn't matter what you call it. And we'll just call, um, let me give it a heading of, let's say, uh, yes or no. It's just really, it makes it easy to identify what this one's relating to. And then we can just type our two values. So we've got yes and no. And it's worth noting that whatever one you put on top is going to be the first value that appears. Um, might be of importance to you, but it just sometimes helps when you're using, a, if you want to enforce a, a default value as such. So what we're going to do, once we've got our initial values there, we're just going to select those three rows and we're going to select table. And table is found under the insert tab if you're not already on that sheet. And you can see that it's picked up our range. And we just need to make sure that if this is unticked, we just need to tick this just so it's aware that the first row is actually your headers. So we didn't want to actually use that as values, it's the headers for that table. And go OK. And you can see it does some formatting for us so we can now see that it's a table. And for us, we can just see that obviously the yes or no, the header is in that nice dark blue. And that just stands out and be different from the actual values below it. And from selecting in there, we can see that it's called, uh, the table name is table 2. Uh, by default, if you've not put any tables into your spreadsheet to start off with, it will default to table 1. But for us, you can see we've obviously been playing around with other tables, therefore it's automatically uh, gone up in iteration, so it's now calling it table 2. So that's our values there. If we go back to our review sheet and we now want to enter this data validation, all we can do, need to do is select our desired range. So for us, it's just these five rows that contain names. 
and then we go into data, data validation, uh, and we want to select the list. And this time we click into our source and navigate to our value sheet. And you can see that we've got our table in here. So what you might think is we're just going to select the range, but actually we can't do that. We actually have to use another formula. So all we're going to do is type in here in direct, open brackets, and do a quotation. And then we know it's, well, I was going to say, we, we need to know what this uh, table is called, but we know it's called table two. We're then going to do um, a bracket, so the square bracket. And then we need to put in the column uh, header or column title for, for that particular column that we want to source values from. So for us, we know it's table two and the column we want to source for our values is yes or no. So you can just type in here yes or no. Close our brackets, do another quotation and then close our curve brackets. And then select OK and you can see we get taken back to our review sheet. And now what will happen is when we go to our drop down, you can see we've got the yes or no options. So it's pulling our table or our desired values as required. The real benefit now comes I mean, if we go to our value sheet and we say, well, actually, what another option of maybe. Then we can then come back into here and we can see that maybe is now automatically picked up as one of our values. So it's a real dynamic way of working. And straight away, the opposite is if we go to values and we get rid of maybe we can see that uh, it's been automatically updated. So we now have only got a yes or a no in there. So again, a real great dynamic solution. Uh, the reason we put review here is I was actually going to do a different example here rather than yes or no. So we could just go through that. And that would be, let's say, um, low, medium, and high. So again, you can see another way, another great use of this is if you suddenly change your mind and you want something else. We can go into here and we can now see we've got the options of low, medium and high. And what my intention was to do is to say, oh, we're going to give each one of these people a review and we can give them a medium, low or high review, obviously based on maybe what their performance or how they've been working is like this. And you, obviously the other benefit or not the other benefit. And then the example was going to then mention that if we wanted to change this and then maybe have, um, let's say, very low, low medium, um, high, very high, like that. And then you can see that we can now got these selections in here as well. And this, I did touch on it, I think, earlier, but obviously the order that they appear in the drop down is the order that you type them in your uh, table list. So that's just one thing to mention because you might want this sort of um, presentation in terms of obviously lowest to highest if you're doing this sort of drop down uh, when the person has the selection. So. Hope you enjoyed that video and it's gave you insight of obviously how you can make the feed for your uh, data validation dynamic. Uh, again, as we touched on, it just makes it a lot simpler for when if there's been multiple people, multiple people updating this or if you just to make sure that all your information has one central point. Uh, because what you can do is obviously the more drop downs you have, the more tables that you can add to your values sheet. Uh, often as a practice, what I often do is we'll do a separate table. Uh, for each value. So let's say in this one you did just want your let yes or no. What we could do is um, table new. I'm just trying to think of a, a unique title header. Yes, no. All we then need to do is go into here. Uh, table table has headers. Okay. And that's called table three. So what we could then do is if we then wanted this one to be a yes or no. Let's go data, I can't remember where it was then, data validation. We want a list and our source for this one is then going to be, I have to go back in here just to make sure I've got the name right. So we want to do indirect, open, quotations, table three, open other brackets, table new. And again, don't use these uh, column headers as examples it, uh, for you to use. It's just examples for the purpose of this tutorial because they're not very well named. Go OK. And you can see now we've got our yes or no drop down here as well. So we can put yes or no. That was an option. So that you can now see how it would look if you're going to add more um, tables to your data. So you can see each, each drop down or each drop down list is its own unique table. So we've got table two and table three. Leave them separated by one column, obviously, so there's no confusion. But then this is how I would build out a sheet of multiple uh, drop downs 
to make sure it is more clear so we can see obviously a dedicated sheet for where all our values reside and then there's no it's not too messy and we know exactly where you need to go to update those values so i hope you enjoyed that video if you did please do give the video a like it not only shows me the videos and the content that you want to see more of it also does help out with that youtube algorithm and lastly if you've not done so already please do subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of more videos coming out. Uh, at the moment, we post weekly, uh, but I really want to try and increase that frequency. But by subscribing and hit that bell notification, you'll be notified as soon as our new videos do come out. So thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next video. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel. You'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks. We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorized together. So make sure you check those out and get all those useful information. And obviously, as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.